Hello there, friends and RC family. My name is Alec from High Noon Hobbies, and if you are new to this channel, I very much appreciate you checking it out. I hope that you will stick around, watch at least this video, see if this content seems worth your while, and consider subscribing so that then I can say to you, if you aren't new here, welcome back to yet another Friday upload. This time, we are not doing a run breakdown. We are actually doing something a little bit more technical. We're going to dive down and do a little bit, bit of... Blah, 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 blah. We're going we're gonna to dive down and do a little bit of bench time, and uh, we are going to fix the capper axle. So this thing has been broken for quite some time now, but luckily, look what I got in stock right over here. We've got an axial axle for the Capra four-wheel steer, and we're going to show you how to repair it. So let's dive down to the bench and uh, get right into it, shall we? All right. I hope that you can see kind of what's going on here. If you are unfamiliar with how to get your Capra basically broken down, I'm going to link to another video somewhere in here or over there, I'm not entirely certain, but somewhere up here, I'll link to a video where I uh, actually go through and fix my Capra another time and I go through in more detail how you take out the initial screws, how you remove the suspension from the chassis, and basically how you separate the bottom part of the Capra from the top part of the Capra, which would be the body itself. As you can see, my Capra isn't totally stock. This is not how it's going to look when you get to it. Um, we've got a lot of chaos going on in here. That's totally fine because all we're doing today is we're dealing with an axle, so we don't need to worry about any of this stuff. We're gonna start working on uh, getting everything torn apart. So I'm going to start uh, with the steering, like I mentioned, and just kind of work my way back. First thing I'm gonna undo is the servo just because it's right here on top, super accessible. I'm going to do my best to keep everything as assembled as I can here so that I have the least reassembly that I possibly can. Um, so I'm going to leave the steering servo attached to the, uh, or the servo horn attached to the servo, and I'm going to leave that steering link attached to the servo horn as well. So as you can see, when I removed that steering link, it obviously the screw goes all the way through your knuckle and that's going to drop one side of your uh, front steering link here, which you can remove the other side of. This one's going to be a shorter screw because it's not holding in two links, just one. Our steering is done. If you're interested in seeing a closer up of this thing broken to all hell, let's see if I can get you focused in right in here. Yeah, as you can see, that is not in the best shape. That's seen better days for sure. It's cracked all the way through on the top there and actually to the point where I can pop this piece out and flop it to the side like that. If your steering axle ever looks like that, you know you have problems. All right, let's keep working. Next is going to be removing these knuckles here. The side's already basically removed itself. What I'm going to do to keep these screws organized is just put the screw that I take out of the knuckle back into the knuckle. There's a lot of different methods you can use to keep your screws organized, but I definitely recommend you choose one and you stick with it. As you can see, you're gonna to need to use this sleeve here in your new axle, it's gonna slide in like that. See how that works? So, don't lose those sleeves. Got both my knuckles off. Back to autofocus and see if it works for us. Got both of our knuckles off. And we've got all of the screws that we need in the knuckles to replace uh, and put them back on the uh, new portal, um, or the new axle. When you take those bad boys off, you can then pull your shafts out. So now I am going to um, undo my links and my suspension. All right, and now we are down to the last part, which is we gotta break into this bad boy and grab these gears out of here.
Okay, so after you get those four screws that are holding the um, third member <clears throat> in there, we can see that we've got the gears. Um, we have one gear on this side and we have another gear over here on this side. These are just going to be held in, at least this side is just gonna be held in with these bearings. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go grab the new axle. I'm gonna take this center differential section, pull it out of there, pop her right into the new one. We're gonna deal with grease in just a second. So we're done with the old axle, out with the old, in with the new. New axle has center gear. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. You can, if you want to, just kind of inspect this third member. And if this all looks good, which it doesn't look bad, you can just reuse the same one again, or you can use the new one, obviously, that comes in your kit with your new axle. I think for the sake of saving time, I'm gonna use the same same one. It doesn't look like it's in bad shape. There's no major cracks. Obviously it's seen, uh, seen a little bit of a beating, but I think that we're gonna be good. We're gonna use that same one again. If you don't, or if you can't, for some reason use that same member, third member again, you're just going to undo this set screw here that's in the drive shaft, pull that guy out, and uh, this gear that's inside of there will drop out and you can swap it back into the new third member you got. But I think for most people, you're gonna be able to sell, save yourself just a little bit of time by you reusing the same third member once again. Um, to make sure <clears throat> that everything stays nice in here, we're gonna throw some grease onto the gearing. really don't need a ton of grease. Um, I guess it's all dependent on your conditions and what you're gonna be doing. I don't feel the need to really pack my differentials with grease, although you certainly could if you wanted to. I just do kind of a, a fairly liberal application. Getting this thing seated back in the axle was not super easy. Definitely took some, some jiggling and wiggling to get that guy happy. Everything's back together. One thing I forgot to mention is the bearings that are on the end of your axle. You're gonna wanna make sure that those bearings make it into the new axle. And on the broken side, the bearing just popped right out, but on the side that wasn't broken, the bearing is still in there. So I'm gonna have to gently pop the bearing out of that side. Going to grab a cleaning rag and just give this bearing a nice little cleaning. Sure, it's still spinning all right. Feels good. I'm gonna throw it on the end of the shaft that I know it came off of there. Okay. Now, We've got a new axle. We've got the gearing inside completed. We've got to deal with the axle shafts now. See if we can get these back in there. Nice and easy, just a press fit. Same with this side, gotta line it up. Press fit, okay. Those are in there. Everything's spinning the way that it should. Always before you, at least I like to, before I screw anything back in here, I like to just make sure that everything is spinning the way that it should, looks good. Put these screws back in. Oh dear. All right, that is tightened down. Now we are basically reversing all the steps that we took. Don't forget that you will need to install the servo uh, mount plate, which you can steal the screws from out of the old axle as well. You can use the old mount plate if you feel like it's 
still structurally sound. I personally think that's a good idea to replace it. Especially if you use your Capra in competition. Let's see, beveled edge towards the back. So here we go. Take the new beveled edge towards the back and use these countersunk screws. The really the only difficult part here, the only thing to remember is how the links and the suspension and all that sort of stuff goes. Your links are going to, your, your bottom links are going to face outwards like this and they're going to be on the inside of your kind of two-step setup here. So your outside is going to be your suspension, your inside is going to be your link facing kind of pointed out this way. And then same thing with your upper links. There's only one spot for your upper links to go and those are straight, so those are pretty, pretty hard to screw up. Also, a, a kind of a trick that I've learned for getting the suspension and the links back in is to use the screw to your advantage. So put the screw, the screw's only going to thread at the very end. So if you put the screw kind of in there and then you thread it through the shock, now your shock is going to sit there nice and pretty and wait for you to put your link in. Put your link in, you push your screw through your link push it all the way to the end, and now all you've got to do is tighten that bad boy down. This could be a good excuse to like clean parts and redo suspension, put new oil in and all that sort of goodness, or if you're lazy like me, you say screw it, throw it all back together and keep ripping. Okay, upper links. Now remember which one is right and left first off. You can quickly and easily doing that do that by seeing which uh, side of the of your portal the actual steering linkage comes off of or the steering uh, linkage uh, mount point comes off of and that tells you what uh, side of that faces forward on the axle. This can be kind of a pizzane because you've got to get this gear meshed up inside of there. Boom. Take your screw, boom, put it in the hub, just like that, boom, sort of, kind of, it's almost lined up for me. I'm actually going to use two mil non power driver. Just I find using a driver actually helps uh, with the lining up process. This side now, same thing, hand driver helps you line up those threads. Okay, tight and tight, same exact process. Okay, we take our portal, we shove her in there until we find the hole. You'll find your home. Boom, we found our home, line our screw holes up, and screw those screw holes, start with the hand driver, find threads, tie rod, it's going to want to go in there next, start with your driver's side, There we go. That bad boy, get that in there. This bad boy. Oh, that one's being a bit of a pain. Pain in the buttock. I'm working on this side right now. Going to get our steering servo. That bad boy back in there. 
need to have the steering servo attached to get that last link on. I mean, I suppose it doesn't need to be screwed down. So now we can do this link screw. Bada bing, bada boom. Steering servo. Screw that down tight. What a perfect time for that to die. Last screw by hand. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a completed axle. We just did it. Took like 30 minutes. Wasn't too hard at all. The longer or the more times you do it, the easier it's gonna get, the faster it's gonna get. And uh, you're gonna wanna keep a few of these bad boys on hand because you will be breaking them. And it's good to be able to uh, fix them yourself, know how to fix them, fix it quickly, get back on the trails and have a good time. I'll bring you back up to a face cam. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is all I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this more technical breakdown video. As I mentioned, links to a few more technical breakdowns are gonna be throughout the video. I'll throw them down in the description as well. If you have any comments or questions, don't hesitate to leave them down in the comment section down below, as well as any sort of advice you might have as to what would make a good video in your opinion in the future, or what you think I do well or not well, what you think I could be doing better. But but uh, all right, that's all I've got for you. If you made it to the end of the video, don't forget to give it a like and we'll see you in the next one. Appreciate you watching, adios.